Well, hello there, it's Christy. It's time for another video. And this video is a reaction to the fact that there are plenty of wrecked feminist videos on YouTube, but not that many wrecked anti-feminist videos on YouTube. And to remedy this gap in the market, I've gone ahead and selected some of my favorite moments from ownage videos for a particular anti-feminist and put them together in a compilation for your enjoyment. In this first episode, I've selected a man who routinely puts out bad information, misinformation, who fails to do proper research and doesn't provide or cite sources too often. Armored Skeptic, a guy whose skepticism is so shoddy, many people have questioned why he even bothers putting Skeptic in his channel name. And now, for your enjoyment, wrecked Pwned Anti-Feminist, featuring Armored Skeptic. There is no human institution that has done so much in so many cultures across such a long period of time to hold women down as organized religion. Okay. Well, for starters, what do you mean by okay? Is that a reasoned and logical argument? I thought you were part of the crowd that has a big problem with the way that Muslims, for example, treat women and the way women have been treated by Christians, and those are valid concerns to have. So what do you mean by, okay? Like, this is the reasoned um, armored skeptic. Just, okay. All right, good, good argument, man. For most of the history of civilization, the proposition that women ought to be treated equally to men was just as radical as the proposition that gods did not exist. Well, that's arguably false, but I feel compelled to point out, Stephen, that there are parts of the Western world that still think that the idea of saying there is no god is radical, but the only people who in mass I hear perpetuating the concept that women are not equal to men are third wave feminists. So another substantial point there by the armored skeptic using his reasoning and skeptic skills to make a really just nuanced deep point that that's arguably false fantastic like you know there's really a lot to sort of get your head around there arguably false hmm, we're really good but i would argue that that's arguably false so your argu arguably false is arguably false i've just out reasoned you bro you know so how are you gonna get how are you gonna respond to that The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms explains, The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms guarantees the rights and freedoms set in it subject only to such reasonable limits prescribed by law as can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. So, unlike in, say, the United States, where a law has to be demonstrated as constitutional to enact punishment on somebody who breaks that law... No, what? People can and have been punished under U.S. federal and state laws that were later found unconstitutional. It happens. Yeah, of course people can challenge the constitutionality of a law, but that doesn't mean there's some built-in feature that prevents anyone from ever being sentenced in the first place under a law that could be interpreted as unconstitutional. I really think you're searching for differences between these two countries where, functionally, they barely exist, if at all. Okay, this segment is actually fascinating in numerous ways, and almost makes me question Skeptic's intellectual honesty in regards to accurately presenting the content of the show. It contains numerous falsehoods and omissions. The first false assertion is that this segment is about how Prashanth was mad at white people for appropriating a culture that wasn't theirs. Prashant lectured the entire white race on how it's unacceptable to use Asian mysticism because it's from a different culture. I don't want to do this to Skeptic, but that's just not true. That isn't what happened here. Skeptic is attempting to accuse him of arguing about cultural appropriation, 
but he's actually talking about the well-known problem of quacks attempting to hide pseudoscience behind Asian mysticism. So you say it's magic and that it cures gout, and for good measure you throw in a Ganesh statue just to give it this ancient wisdomy feel. <laughs> Prashanth even name drops an infamous example who is himself of Asian descent, so he's definitely not talking about appropriation. It's actually the oldest trick in the book, half nonsense, half Indian. It's called the Deepak Chopra. <laughs> Why the fuck is somebody talking about the white race on the Bill Nye show? It seems like Skeptic heard Prashanth say, Hey, white people, and then he like turned his brain off and didn't... Like, didn't see this bit? Like, I'm genuinely curious if he remembers this part. The second false assertion is that this is a lecture, a man talking down to a group of people in some kind of mad, antagonistic, puritanical screed. This inaccurately represents the tone of the segment. Let's play back one of the brief clips Skeptic uses of this part on mute, but with the sound on this time. White people, I love you. But stop using Asian wallpaper for street cred. I see what you're doing. This segment is a stand-up comedy routine. The man performing this skit is a stand-up comedian. Part of the joke is the hyperbolic way he's talking down to entire races of people. That's right, races. Which is why I want to say something to my fellow Asians. Asians, lend me your ears. Stop convincing white people it is real. This is as much on you as it is on them. You know how gullible they are. Prashanth is being superlative for comedic effect to get across a quite genuine idea, and the audience is laughing along with it. This isn't a lecture in the slightest. The third false assertion is this one. And he says that he doesn't like Asian mysticism. In fact, he says that he hates it. Prashanth never says anything like this. He doesn't hate Asian culture. He hates it being used to sell remedies with no basis in science, regardless of race. Asians, stop selling unregulated remedies with no scientific basis. And white people, stop using Asian culture to sell unregulated remedies with no scientific proof. Look, I get that cultural appropriation and how it's not a problem is a popular talking point in the skeptic community, but that doesn't necessarily mean everyone is always talking about appropriation. And treating this segment like one has caused skeptic to miss out on a point that I'm actually like 99% sure he agrees with. It's really cool that you have friends, Stephen, and thanks for bragging about that. But you've committed your first major logical fallacy here. Confirmation bias is not an argument. Confirmation bias is not a logical fallacy. It's a bias. All of this, I think, serves to illustrate a point. You, Greg, feel the need to sit down and make a 40-minute long video that was seen by more than 130,000 people at the point of me scripting this video. Yet, you don't know anything. Your entire argumentation, if you even can call it that, is completely devoid of any substance. You tiptoe around without dropping a single piece of concrete evidence or substance. And listen, I'm not saying pick a side, okay? That's not what I'm saying here. I am saying that if you make the claim that both sides have an argument, you have to provide provide arguments for both sides, but you didn't do that. And you even lack the most basic understanding of history, political frameworks or economy. You confuse Imperial Japan with Edo period Japan, you don't know what actual political centrism is, and you don't even know what communism is. And worst of all, you actually, unironically, you as a proponent of the scientific method and whatnot, you deny the anti-Irish racism in the 19th century. You know, there's a pretty famous German phrase. Wenn man keine Ahnung hat, einfach mal die Schnauze halten. Not in English. If you don't have a clue, just shut up. And I think this phrase applies marvelously to you in this instance. Greg, it is an honor, a privilege, and an absolute pleasure to hand you over the very first ever Excellence in Ignorance Award. In fact, you know what? Have all of them. You deserve them. Your video was probably one of the worst videos I've ever forced myself through. And unironically, most of the feminists and quote-unquote SJW videos that I've watched actually had more substance and made more sense than yours. Normally, I really wouldn't care about any of this. But you come along with your borderless ego, with your constant references to logic, knowledge, empiricism, scientific method and whatnot, but at the same time you are completely oblivious of the most basic concepts there are. And that's what makes this video so fucking amazing. You are one of the figureheads of the so-called Skeptosphere, 330,000 subscribers or something, and you 
<laughs> you, you ironically don't know <laughs> about the race realism in the 19th century. <laughs> I have. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say, man. It's, you know, it's like. <laughs> 